So you guys have been asking me to react to the channel It's Katie Donnelly. Um, I don't know exactly who this YouTuber is because I don't watch a ton of different YouTubers, but apparently she got a hamster and didn't tell her parents. That is what the title of the video is. So let's watch the video. I'm doing a, I'm doing a video. Okay. Are you proud of me? I'm very proud of you. I think you'll have fun. So, I hey guys. Back in again with another video. Um, but for this, I'm gonna need... So she doesn't know what I'm doing yet. And you'll probably already know what I'm doing. I do want to say, please never do this. Please don't go out and get a pet and bring it back to a home that you don't own if it's owned by your parents or somebody else owns the house and you're not telling them that you're bringing back a pet. Um, and they're unaware of it because it can turn out really, really badly. They can decide to make you get rid of the animal um, or bring it back. They can also, if you are a kid and you decide to do this, um, if you don't have the funds to be, able, to be able to take care of the pet, your parents can be like, no, we're not paying for you to care for this pet. Therefore, the animal is going to get neglected because they're not getting the needs they need. Um, it's really important you don't just go out and you bring home animals uh, to a house that you don't own because it's not really respectable to your parents. You should always check with whoever owns the home because they're the ones who make the decisions. If you clicked on this video, because you probably would have seen the thumbnail and you probably would have been like, oh, that's kind of interesting. Oh, focus please, thanks. And so, um... I don't have money, <laughs> so to do this video, I kind of need some money from you. Okay. And I'm not trying, I just don't want to not have enough when I get there. Right. So I'm thinking around like, like 200 maybe. Thank you. Can I use your card? Yes. Here you are. Thank you. Good love luck. you. Do not lose it. I love you too. Make okay, sure bye. everything you're doing is legal, okay? Um, kidding, it's totally legal. And fun. And fun. Love you, bye. Bye, bye, love you. Reptiles, oh, bro. <gasps> Stop it, look at that. Is it actually a rat? Oh, <laughs> that's kind of lit, honestly. Rat. <laughs> that's not taking say words. It's like, that can't be it. So we're not allowed to film in here, but we're filming anyway because that's my whole video and we're trying to decide if I should get like a ferret. Because the cloud is more important than Because the cloud is more so that is really uh, concerning to me because a ferret and a hamster are completely opposite types of animals. Like they require the complete opposite different types of care. And if you're impulsively going in and getting a pet right there and then, it's likely that you're not done your research. So you're probably going to go off of what the pet store you're at says to get for them. and it's just not a great strategy because 99% of the time pet stores just don't know the proper care for animals. They sell a lot of unsafe things for animals, which is really unfortunate. And a lot of the times they just want you to buy random products because it makes them money. All I know is I have water, I mean, some practice in Okay, that, that right doesn't after. matter right now. I need an animal. It doesn't matter. I need a pet. Hi guys. <laughs> Katie, what'd you get today? Um, I got, okay, so basically what happened was Brennan had to leave because he had practice, and so Tristan's by the camera right now, and uh, so uh, the three of us are probably gonna go get some food, but um, <laughs> I got a, a hamster. Cow. I got a hamster out of a door. So I noticed that she does have a tank for the hamster, which is great. Uh, I prefer tanks over bark cages, but it appears to be a 10 gallon aquarium, which unfortunately would be too small for any type of hamster. When it comes to hamsters, you want to use nothing less than a 40 gallon. So this is my hamster. <laughs> it's in this box and his name is Monkey. And Tristan, will you stop moving the car? I feel so bad for him. He's probably so scared. Can I park first? He's just we know five in a box. It's a guy. Uh, his name's Monkey. I'm so excited. Look at all my stuff I got for him. I'm so excited. Do I keep in my room? I don't have any room in my room. Unless I want to move my TV, but I don't want to move my TV. Hi, bud. I don't want to like... You're so cute. 
So because he's new, it's really a good idea to just avoid interaction for the first two to three days. So like bringing them out to hold him, it can be really stressful for him because they just were in a pet store environment. They weren't handled too much generally. Um, so they're not used to it. They're also not used to you, your smell, or like all of this moving. So it's really best to just like avoid contact just to keep the stress to a minimum. Right here. Can you crunch a little bit louder? That's like literally my desk. Hide it under your bed. Can I, can I like put it right here and then move this? Don't hide animals in, under your bed. Don't hide. I know people who have hid animals in their closets from their parents and it's just a really terrible idea. Don't hide animals from your parents. The worst idea ever. I know like you think it's a good idea because they're not going to find out and you really want to have this pet but if that animal gets sick and you need to take them to the vet your parents are going to find out and if you don't have money yourself to take them to the vet your parents probably are going to be like you know what no we didn't even want you to have this pet we're not paying the money to take this random animal to the vet and then the animal has to then suffer because they are sick and they need to see a vet so don't hide animals from your parents or whoever you're living with. So I like that she actually got the KT Clean and Cozy. That's really great. It's a safe bedding. Uh, it's not Piner Cedar, which is great. So good job. <laughs> So it looks like they're struggling with the water bottle holder, which I've been there. Sometimes it just it doesn't work with a tank. Um, so actually a good idea, instead of using tape to hold up the water bottle, would actually be to use industrial Velcro and then it sticks on, you can take it off easily. I know tape is like, it's a big struggle using tape in a water bottle. So that's just like a little tip. Is it a smart hamster or is it like I dumb? Oh. Look, it's burrowing. Oh. Wait, Please run. <laughs> Crib check. <laughs> Here we got the spinning wheel, the you water bottle. Just... Okay, so like where do I put it though? <laughs> so I don't know if Katie is ever going to watch this or even the family, but I do have some tips for you guys to uh, make monkeys life a little bit better. So the first thing I would change is actually the aquarium. So once again, uh, nothing less than a 40 gallon should be used. If you don't want to get a 40 gallon aquarium, there is bin cages. These are just bins that you convert into a hamster cage. And this could actually be a really fun project to uh, film and then upload on your channel. It can definitely be kind of a fun little video idea. Another thing is that you're definitely going to want to put a lot more bedding. Um, you'd want to have six inches in a section so that your hamster can actually properly burrow like and make tunnels rather than just digging underneath the top surface. Uh, another thing is the flying saucer. Um, I would probably go with a regular sized wheel. Flying saucers tend to uh, not be the greatest. A lot of dwarfs tend to fly off of them because they go really fast. So a regular sized uh, eight inch wheel would be really great. I also would recommend just doing a little bit more in-depth research on like hamster diet. Um, you can also uh, include some things like a hamster sand bath, which is important so that your hamster can bathe themselves. Since they can't be bathed in water, it can just help clean their coat and they can dig in it and it just helps them do more natural behaviors as well as definitely more accessories and things in there for them to actually do some stuff. Sorry, Dwight. How are you doing? <laughs> What's happening? Ask oh, her. No. Oh no! What is that? Do I see it? No, I don't! I don't! <laughs> Told you. The cat is gonna eat it, Kate. <laughs> it's not. What is it? Dad, stop, stop, stop. That's wrong! Come That's come oh, here, come oh, here. No, That's no, 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 Cat's 
Hey. He's so disappointed. This is this is this is why you don't you don't do this. No, yeah. we're gonna die. Yeah. <laughs> That's the other thing. Your parents can make you get rid of it because it is their house and it just puts the hamster in like a really bad situation. Like they shouldn't have to go through all that stress to get to your house and then your parents would be like, no, you have to return it or bring it back or just, we don't care, get rid of it. Uh, it's not fair to the hamster. Hi. So cute. She's vlogging for the family vlog. Bye. Go watch it. Not acceptable. What's under What's in this apple? Okay, here we go. <gasps> what is it? Is it a fish? It's a snake. No. Are you serious? It's, a it's in a fish. <laughs> it has bedding in a wheel. In <laughs> but yeah, it's a fish. Serious? It's not. <laughs> oh my gosh. I think, guys, I'm definitely afraid of snakes. You gotta figure it out. Is it a spider? No. no. Oh. I have to figure it out. Here. Okay, so I'll show you. Aww, Katie. I have a shell on top so cats won't eat it. Oh, that's a good idea. <laughs> that is a good idea. I'm also glad that if they have cats, she opted for a mesh lid. You should always have a lid on your hamster's enclosure regardless because they're good escape artists. But especially if you have pets, you definitely need a lid. <gasps> Why are you to take oh, care yeah, of but This is the thing, Katie. You know what? To take yeah, care of You have to actually you, clean you, his... Only once a month. That... I'm glad she actually knows that, but the only thing is, uh, with a 10 gallon, if you were to only clean it once a month, because of the small floor space, it is going to get really, really dirty really fast, so cleaning a 10 gallon once a month really wouldn't be the greatest, um, so you're definitely going to want to upgrade the enclosure. Oh, he's so cute. <clears throat> Do you like him? I do. He's very cute. I just want to. I just want to say, I'm not going to take. I'm not going to. No, you guys have to take care of him. Okay. Okay. I take care of the kitties. You're a lot nicer. That is another good point. Uh, a lot of people who may impulse buy a pet, uh, maybe if you're younger, some people lose interest in things very, very quickly. So. If you lose interest in your hamster and you don't want to care for them anymore, it's not your parents' responsibility to keep continuing to care for them because they didn't want the pet. It is 100% your responsibility. You have to do all of their care until the end of their life. So the moral of the story is to just not impulse buy pets. Always make sure to do your research before getting a pet to make sure it fits your lifestyle. If Katie or her family ends up watching this video and you guys would like more help with Monkey, I would love to help you guys out and just give you any care advice that you need um and yeah i hope you guys have enjoyed watching this video and i will see you in my next one bye